Or is that where we go to the refrain? I don't think so. I think we, we do the refrain after the after the first three. Okay. There's no direction to jump to the refrain. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Can we do the glory of God right before that? Sure. So I get into it. The glory of God.
Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship this morning. It's a pleasure to have all of you with us in worship today as we gather together to celebrate that religious holiday we always all forget called Transfiguration Sunday. Today is the last Sunday before we begin the season of Lent, that season of getting ready for Easter, for Christ to go to Jerusalem, to die and to be raised again, again from the dead. Today is the day that we remember God appearing and letting everyone know just who Jesus was and what God had in store. Let us gather together this morning in worship once we've heard some of our announcements. I do want to remind you that we will have an Ash Wednesday service at noon on Wednesday. I know some of you work and so you cannot be here with us in person. We have fantastic Ash Wednesday to go kits for you. So the service will be on Facebook Live for you to watch either live or at any time and you can take a kit with you to go. And that way you can impose your own ashes on yourself. There's a wonderful little eyeshadow applicator, which is the easiest way to get the ashes on in a smooth pattern. We're thankful to have everybody with us in person who can be, and we would hope to see as many of you as can be with us here then. We do have some liturgist openings for the next year. If you'd like to think about signing up, we would love to have you serve with us as a liturgist. We also have some openings on our flower chart. If you would like to provide flowers, it's a wonderful way to help enliven the sanctuary and celebrate someone who you love. There are some Meals on Wheels dates <coughs> available in April if you would like to serve with Meryl. She would love to tell you how to do it and what to do. <coughs> Sorry. We do have an email list that we want to encourage you to subscribe to so that you know what's going on in the life of the church. You can see the QR code in the bulletin so that you know how to get onto our email list. We have started taking our Deacon Easter flower orders today. I think we actually started last week. If you would like to order flowers, there's envelopes available at the back. This year they're selling tulips, mums, daffodils, hyacinths, or lilies. And you can pick up a form, fill it out with your dedication, and turn it in so that we can get those ordered. We are also beginning to collect some non-perishable food for the Back Mountain Food Pantry. We're gonna continue, as has been our recent pattern, to give gift cards to the families in need through our school districts so that they can purchase the groceries that they need. But we're always thankful to be able to co collect non-perishable food to go to the Back Mountain Food Pantry to help support their clients. So if you have some non-perishable food you'd like to donate, if you're at the grocery store and you see a great sale on peas, feel free to buy some and bring some to donate. Women of Trinity have announced their next meeting date. It's March 24th at 1230, and we encourage you to be there if you are able. It's always a wonderful time of fellowship. And remember to get those announcements in by Tuesday, and the newsletter is due for, Mar for, March by March for April by March 28th. It's wonderful to have all of you with us together in worship today. We're excited to be able to praise the Lord and glorify God together.
good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. God's greatness is unsearchable. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than of angels heaven can boast. 
Now, please listen to the call to confession. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Now, please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, you have given us the laws of Moses and the teachings of Jesus to direct us in the ways of life. You are offer us your Holy Spirit so that we can be born to a new life as your children. Yet, O oh God, we confess that the ways of death have a strong attraction and that we often succumb to their lure. Give us the vision and courage to choose and nurture a life, that we may receive your blessing. Amen. Now we observe a time of silence for personal confession. Amen. Friends, hear and believe the good news. Our God pardons our sins and forgives our disobedience. Our God does not stay angry forever. Instead, our God delights to show mercy. Our God again has compassion on us. Our God tramples our sins underfoot and hurls our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Give thanks to our God for our God is good. Invite you to rise as we join together in our response from what a friend we have in Jesus. I want to invite any children who are worshiping up with us this morning who would like to come forward to come forward. If you would rather listen from your pew, that is perfectly acceptable. We have a new friend coming. Look at how cute she is. What's her name? Kinsley. Oh, Kinsley, you are so cute. We love you so much. So today in church is a day where we remember that one day Jesus went on top of a huge mountain. And do you know who met God, Jesus on top of the mountain? God met Jesus on top of the mountain. Do you know what happens all throughout the Bible? God meets people on mountains. Do you know what we live on? A mountain! Oh my gosh, do you think God might meet us on top of this mountain? Christmas? I love Christmas. It's true, we do put Christmas on the Christmas tree. Absolutely right. With snow, absolutely. So in this story, what we hear about. There is 
snow outside, and yet it's not Christmas anymore. Isn't that awful? Yeah. I know. Yeah. As long as it snows, it should definitely be Christmas. Yeah, lovely. Okay, can I finish my story? Thank you. <laughs> so today, Jesus and his friends go up in a mountain, and God meets them there. And do you know what God says about Jesus? God says, this is my child who I love, who I sent to be with you. And the friends are so excited. Do you know what they say? We should stay here forever. We should build some houses and live on top of this mountain. But do you know what Jesus says? We can't stay on top of the mountain. We have to go out and do work. We can't just stay hiding on our mountain. And so they go out and they do work and they go to Jerusalem and they get ready for Easter. Oh, bless you, Kinsley. And so today, we get to be on the mountain. We get to feel close to God and know that God loves us. Does God love you? Yeah, I got eggs for Easter. And, and soon enough, we'll get eggs for Easter. Yes. Does God love you, Ella? Yeah. God does love you. Does, does God love you? Yeah. Does God love you? Does God love you? Yeah. But do we just get to stay here and be comfortable? No, we got to go down from the mountain and out in the world and do the work, right? All right, let's pray. God, thank you for meeting us on our mountain. Thank you for telling us how you love us. And thank you for sending us out in the world to do your work, even when it's hard. Help us to enjoy our time together, but help us to go out and serve you well. Amen. And some of you may be going to Sunday school, and some of you may be staying in worship. You can ask the grown-up who is sitting with you which one you're doing, okay? All right. Bye, friends. <laughs>
and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Our second scripture lesson today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through chapter 4, verse 2. Listen now for the word of God for us this day. Since then we have such hope, we act with great boldness. Not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, on this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is there. Only since Christ is it set aside. Indeed, on this day, where, when Moses is read, the veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Spirit is the Lord, and the Spirit is where the Spirit of the Lord is, and there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, it is, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by open statement of truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, send your spirit upon us that the light of God might shine boldly within us. We might share with the world some of the good news of who you are. That our lives might be a reflection of your grace to all who are able to see. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. I've always loved the children's hymn, This Little Light of Mine. My guess is more than a few of you have been forced to sing it more than a few times. Especially that little line about hiding things under a bushel that you always respond to with the most emphatic no. Because why would you hide a light under a bushel? I think the sad truth, though, is a lot of us do hide our lights under bushels. A lot of us want to live quiet, complacent lives. We don't want to stand out or take a chance. We don't want people to notice us. And so we dim our lights just a little bit. And then we dim them a little bit more. And then we have lights that are just barely burning, so only we know they're there, and no one else can see the way that God is shining inside of us. But this isn't what God invites us to. God invites us to a bold trust in the gospel. God invites us to shine with lights so bright that ships at sea would know to turn back if they got too close to us. God invites us to shine with a grace and a peace and a love so kind that people upon meeting us can't help but know the goodness of God. God invites us to be bold. We are invited to have confidence in God, trusting in the grace we have received. And my prayer for each of you is that today you might find a way to turn your light up just a little bit. Maybe you are already at lighthouse strength and rest assured supernova strength is also appropriate. But maybe your light is barely burning. Maybe your light is tired. You haven't trimmed your wick and it's been burning in just the wrong way so that all the oil gets used up and the lamp still doesn't really shine. No matter where you are, 
there is the invitation to find new ways to let the light of God shine within you. To choose to be a bold witness to the goodness of God and the power of faith. The funny thing about shining your light is it's almost never what you think it actually might be. I remember on the first trip I took to London when I was young and foolish, there were literally people who stood on street corners and screamed things from the Bible at other people. It was possibly the least efficient form of Christian witness I have ever seen. If you feel puzzled by this, join the crowd. I have no idea what they were trying to accomplish other than angering passerbys. But I sometimes think that that's what we imagine that letting your light shine looks like, that it involves an aggressive proselytization of everyone who we encounter. I don't think that's what Christ invites us to. I think Christ invites us to a kindness to friends who are in need, to praying for each other and for ourselves, about turning first to God in trust, and then engaging honestly with each other. I think letting your light shine is about being an encouragement to people in the world that are hurting and finding ways to show up with kindness and with grace. It's about showing up with your full self, ready to serve, sharing your gifts, and watching the community and world be changed by your kindness. Today we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday. I will confess that my very own mother, a cradle Catholic who has gone to church almost every Sunday of her life, asked me why we were celebrating the resurrection before Lent had even started. And I said, because Jesus is alive the first time in this story. This isn't, this isn't chronologically where that one goes. This story is a story we don't really talk about or think about. Even people who've gone to church their whole life rarely know what Transfiguration Sunday is. It's a weird little Sunday we stick in so that those of us with seminary degrees can feel very proud of us for knowing what it is. But I'm gonna clue you in, so when you have to go to a coffee party with some people with seminary degrees, you can be just as smart as them. God doesn't show up and talk to people face to face very often. It happens a couple of times in the Old Testament and in this moment. And what God is saying is Jesus is just like Moses and Elijah. Jesus is special and set apart. He is fully human. He is fully God. He is the beloved child of God. And why that's important is because they are going to go down the mountain and towards Jerusalem. And Jesus is going to die. God is making clear that what lays ahead on Good Friday is not a judgment of Jesus for badness, is a plan that has been set in place for a long time, coming finally to full circle. So Jesus is reenacting for us the encounters of Moja, Moses and Elijah with God so that everyone can see how the sacred tradition continues. So we start this morning by meeting Moses. As he's come down from that mountaintop where he encountered God, he finds that his whole face is glowing. He brings the people of God the commandments that God has set. But then Moses realizes the people who he is with cannot handle it. They cannot handle his glowing face. They cannot handle the repercussions of his encounter with God. And so he veils himself. There's a temptation to hear this as a statement about people who are Jewish. And I want to encourage you, if that's what you're hearing, to just take that and put that right into the garbage. I want to invite you to hear this instead as the reality that many of us who've been in the church our entire life are the people least prepared to encounter miracles. Many of us who've been in the church our entire life have come to a form of complacency that makes a man with a glowing face feel scary to us rather than a gift of the divine encounter. The funny thing about religion is the longer you're in it, the smaller your expectations of God can become. 
And this is what had happened to the people with whom Moses is traveling through the wilderness. This is not about them being Jewish. This is that about them being accustomed to doing things their own way and not counting on God for very much. And so Moses, Moses puts a bushel basket over his candle. Moses hides the part of him that has changed from his encounter with God to protect the other people from the power of that faith with him. But in doing so, he permanently dampers the witness to what has happened. He covers up the power of a personal encounter with God. And so the people miss part of the story. They forget where this comes from. They forget who he is. By contrast, we meet Paul again in Corinthians today. But here it is in his second letter. Paul is writing to the people at Corinth to invite them to let their lights shine. He wants to invite them to be emboldened by the way that God is showing up and to share the good news with those who are around them. Paul wants them to be out in the world sharing the good news of what God has done for them in bold and beautiful ways in part so that they can encourage each other not to give up. So I know y'all heard me talk about this when we talked about 1 Corinthians, but I'm going to remind you again, Corinth wasn't an easy place to be a Christian. And the people at the church in Corinth weren't great at being kind to each other. If you remember, his whole first letter is basically just, they wrote him and told him all the things they were fighting about, and he wrote back and told them how not to be in a fight with each other. So it's funny that now what he writes to them to say is, you have to find new ways to encourage each other. See, the community of the church is supposed to be a place where we encourage each other, where we support each other, where those of us who are being transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit within us speak to those of us who are currently struggling. Because no matter how good of a Christian you are, you have seasons of bright light shining and seasons of discouragement. And the only way we all make it through is by trusting in each other. This life of Christian faith is essentially a witness of transformation. If you are in the same place with your faith that you were last year, it's time to ask some deep questions about how you can begin to be transformed to something new. If this last year has walked you back and you're in a worse place than you were last year, then let's start praying together and finding a way forward. You are called to be transformed from what you were into a new being in Christ. And that being is called to shine with the light of God within you. Your transformation is a witness so that those around you can know the power of the glory of God and be transformed. When we hide the ways that God is changing us, we prevent others from being changed. We keep the witness away from them. We allow people to be discouraged who might have been encouraged by our grace and glory. I don't know how God is working in each of your lives right now, but I hope you are being transformed by your faith. If you are stalled out or just holding fast, know that we are praying for you. If you've moved backwards instead of forwards, know that we are with you. Know that God is inviting you to be transformed to new, deeper levels of faith. God is inviting you to shine with the light of the glory of God. If you are stuck, I have some great news for you. It's about to be Lent, the perfect chance to step up, the perfect chance to let go of things that aren't working, to take up new things that might, to try to shine and glow, to share the good news. I want to share a story with you 
that someone shared with me that has been transformational. One of our members has a friend who found out through roundabout ways that she was a Christian. Her friend said to her, I actually send out an email every week to some of my friends to encourage them. Would you like me to send that email to you? And she said, sure, why not? Not knowing what this was going to be or what was going to happen. This email is some verses of scripture, some reflections and a prayer. So every week, this person has read these verses of scripture, reflections and prayer. I know that it exists because she came to me to say, those verses of scripture, reflections and prayer have been the thing that have seen her through hard seasons. When she has questioned what God is doing in her life and in the world, those verses have spoken to her. When she's questioned who she's supposed to be and how she's supposed to serve, that scripture has prayed with her. She has a community of people who are encouraging her every day, even when she doesn't know all of them. My guess is that person who sends out that email might not have the power, know the power it has to impact people's lives. I think all that person thought is, this is good thoughts for me and I just wanna share them with other people. But he's changing people's lives every day. You are called to shine your light. What is the way that you are gonna share your faith? How are you going to encourage other people? You are called to be transformed. If you are people transformed, how would other people know? How does the glory of God shine in you? I know you have the capacity to live as people of bold faith, trusting in God every day and encouraging each other. So how do we encourage each other today? How do we encourage each other tomorrow? How do we let our light shine and not hide it under a bushel? Amen. Friends, let us join together in singing, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Friends, I invite you to be seated as we prepare to return to God a portion of the blessings that God has given us. I invite you to remember the people who shined light into your life, to give thanks for those who witnessed the gospel to you in ways small and large, 
to give back to God according to the measures of grace that they extended to you. You can give your offering this morning by putting it in the plate, by delivering it to the office, by mailing it to the church at P.O. Box 239, Dallas, Pennsylvania, 18612. However you give back, or by giving online, however you give back, we encourage you to give generously in support of the witness and the ministry of the church. Friends, I invite you to be seated. As we prepare to come before the Lord in prayer, I invite you to keep praying for our brother Rich, who is doing better, but who is still fighting well. So Rich Burkhardt, if you don't know, got a leg infection and it just really knocked him down. So he is recovering now, but we got to keep praying for him. I think if you wanted to send a note, he'd be lovely to have it. He's over at the Meadows, and so you could send a note to the Meadows. He does not need a lot of visitors right now. I went and saw him last week. He let me visit for about three minutes before he let me know my time was up. So <laughs> notes are good. Visits are not necessary. He was happy to see me, but three minutes was the limit. I want to invite you to keep praying for our friends who it's just not safe for them to come back yet. We know we have friends who aren't here who we love. And I want to encourage you, if you have a friend who you miss, this is the week to take time to call them to say, we miss you, we love you, we know you're making the right choice for you, we just wanted you to know you're loved. Friends, let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the glorious gift of this mountaintop moment. We thank you for the gift of children to come and celebrate with us in this place. We thank you for those who've been able to come here this morning 
We pray for our friends who are watching online or who will watch us later this week. Help keep them safe and keep them strong. Help them to know how much we miss and love them and how much we desire for them to be back with us when it is safe and healthy for them. We give thanks for the gift of church and for the promise that this is called to be a community in which your light shines with glory and with grace. Help each of us to tune up our lights this week so they shine a little brighter. As we walk together into Lent on Wednesday, help us to think about what we can do that will help ourselves to shine better with the glory of God, to let go of things that have hurt us, that weigh us down, to give thanks every day for the good that you are doing, to trust in your mercy, and to live and work in your grace. Help us to be your church today in this place and all around the world, that our light might shine with your glory, remembering the witness of your son, Jesus Christ, as we pray together using the words that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as you go out into the world, take off all the bushel baskets that keep your lights from shining, and find new ways to shine with the light of Christ that is inside you to the glory of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.